Good morning, good morning, good morning, girlfriends, scout friends. This is Angela Jordan Perry of Girlfriends Has Got Homeschooling. We are about to get started and uh, get our special guest on here. And um, woo -woo! I hope you all are having a great day so far. This is going to be exciting, exciting, exciting. Woo, our guest is on the on the West Coast, and so uh, she is up bright and early, really early to start her day. Oh, but anywho, here she is. She's coming. Let me get my pen so I can take all my notes. There she is. There she is. There she is. All right, so I'm going to – good morning, Brianna. I'm going to uh, share Give me a quick second, and I'll let you know uh, when it's on. Girlfriend's Guide to Homeschooling. Good morning, everyone. Let us know where you are viewing us from once you get in here. We're glad to have you this morning, bright and early. I know it's at the beginning of the school day, but, you know, uh, for many. But uh, some mamas, we just got to do what we got to do. Good morning, Yaya. Good morning, Brittany. I'm so glad to see you, Brittany. I am going to contact you. Um, but Catherine's been keeping me up uh, on everything. Belinda, good morning, Belinda. <laughs> Belinda, I know you're still laughing at me. All right, I shared it, Brianna. Good morning, Fountain Inn, South Carolina. I'm glad that you are there in Fountain Inn, South Carolina, Brianna. That means you are alive and well, my friend. Been praying for you. So good, 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 good to have everybody. We're going to get started. Brianna, let me know when you shared it, and we will uh, get going. Yes, y'all Yeah, I was thinking about you late last night, wondering if it's um, close to you having your baby yet. Uh, I hadn't seen you on here, and I just wondered, I wonder how y'all is doing. So I hope you're doing well, my friend. <clears throat> All right. Just let oh, know. wow, I'm you, having uh, – You don't see it yet? Oh, I do. Here it is. Okay. Sometimes I can't do two things at one time, like talk and manage other things. So I could have very well <laughs> put it somewhere else. <laughs> I would not put it past me. Yeah, you all, please hit the share button. When you come in, share. Hit the share button right down on the bottom. I see you shared it, Brianna. So we're going to get started. <coughs> I'm going to turn off my computer here. Well, yeah, I had to do the same. It was, it was giving me double. Yep, I heard it. Feedback. So, all right, we're on airplane mode. Here we go. All righty, three, two, one. Girlfriends has got to homeschooling. I am turned up for today's interview. <laughs> Woo! Today we have our special guest coming out of the West Coast. You still got a double feed, so I don't know if it's your computer still on, a feedback. So I'm It's on not on. Mode. No, it's not. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can work through it. But, woo, you all. Well, let me tell you, I'm Angela Jordan Perry. I am your host of Girlfriends Has Got to Homeschooling, and it is my purpose-driven life to make a positive impact on thousands of homeschoolers worldwide. That is my desire and my goal. And so with that in mind, I come to you with these interviews, amazing homeschooling moms I meet at random points, some I don't know, but I'm connecting with. They're all over, from England to California to Oregon, all over. And then we also do podcasts where we have our interviews with, um, well, not interviews. It's called a girlfriend chat where we get to chat homeschool or just their life or just whatever. You know, it's really laid back. So those are the things I do to get the word out uh, to the community. This is a platform to give voice to those who are of the African, the homeschooling Africa diaspora, and the marginalized homeschooling, it's open to anyone's voice, but particularly those to share their journey so that the world will know that we are well, we are alive, and we homeschool too. And we do it well. So hashtag we homeschool too. This is what this platform is. And then also to build a village, uh, a village where you can say, hey, I got part of my village is uh, here in Oregon, part of my village is here in Louisiana, and uh, you, to get connected with connect with them. So at any rate, that's a little bit about me. I'm a homeschooling mom of eight children. Uh, <laughs> let's see, I've been doing it for 18 years, married to one husband, 26 years this year. We live in the, uh, in the upstate of South Carolina where we're farmers. 
And, um, and so yada, 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 that's me. Uh, <laughs> but we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about our guests. So Brianna, are you yes. ready to make it happen, girl? I'm ready. Yes. All right. I don't have as much energy as you, but I'm ready. <laughs> girl, I got to pump it up, <laughs> pump it up, pump it up. But let me tell you a little bit about I'm Brianna. Ready. Brianna is a 38-year-old mother of four absolutely beautiful children, and they are. And hopefully you've seen their picture. Thank beautiful. You. Through a variety of life unexpected situations, Brianna is currently in transition from homelessness. Brianna's homeschooling career began in the midst of homelessness, yet born out of spiritual prompting to provide a safer education, uh, educational environment for her three daughters. With her faith, conviction, and positive outlook, Brianna is a tool of encouragement, a weapon of prayer, and a light of hope, even in seemingly dark places of life. So, Brianna, uh, I put her information, her contact information in the, uh, the notes there so you can continue this conversation with her. But Brianna, I have just told the girlfriends, girl, the guy friends, just a little bit about you. Please tell us more about yourself and how you actually got started into this journey of homeschooling. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, well, first of all, the homelessness was actually a result of um, separation with my husband. Um, it just seemed like everything spiraled out of control at the point of our separation. But I know now you know that um, – that the Most High was using that situation to do a work in me. Um, at the time, I was a bus driver. I was leaving home at 4.30 in the morning, not getting home until 9.30, 10 o'clock at night after my children were well asleep. And it just wasn't conducive to family life. It was just survival. Um, so upon separating from my husband, who was also working two jobs, um, Everything just, you know, everything fell. And um, we relocated to live with my sister for a short amount of time. And I had the children, because um, at this point I'm um, emotional, not really wanting to deal with my children because they're asking questions and they're unaware of what's going on. And I'm just dealing with myself and I'm really depressed and you know, just going through things. So I had them in um after school program where they would be at school from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then I'd pick them up. Um, homework would be done, give them a bath, dinner, bed. Still no real interaction with them at all. And um, this continued for some months. And I was settled into my depression, I think, at that time, you know. So I was happy that the two – because at this time, my son was 16, um, and he was staying with his aunt so that he could be around the boys, his, his cousins, and go to school there. But he was in a totally different city, um, a good 65 miles away, and we had never been separated. So that was the issue. And, um, you know, another issue on top of the issues I was already dealing with. And then I had, um, at the time, they were five and seven my daughters, and the youngest one was one. And um, so it was good for the seven and the five-year-old to be gone all day. So I, all I had to do was, you know, interact with my one-year-old. I was potty training her, you know, TV time, and still no real parenting, you know, no hands-on with my two middle daughters. Um, so I did that for a while, and as I was you know, um, at the beginning of the school year, there was an issue in the city that we lived in. We lived in um, Palmdale, and there was an issue. I guess um, someone had committed a crime, you know, and the, the school called and let us know that they had put the school on lockdown, but the kids were safe. You know, it was an automated recording, but it was still a notification to let us know what was going on with the school. So I, I, you know, I paid attention to that. I was like, oh, that's good, because mind you, this is a new school. We've come to a new city where, you know, learning everything all over. <clears throat> so um, because my separation occurred in the summertime. So, you know, it was relocation and all that. So then um, 
as the weeks went on, months went on, you know, my daughters got into this program that was that had a waiting list a mile long, but they got a spot in there. And I was thankful, you know, 7 p.m., it's dark. I'm picking them up, you know, as the months go on, it's getting dark. And, you know, they're like, Mom, we're at school till nighttime. You know, these are the things my daughters are saying, you know, from night to night. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, you know, in the back of my mind. But still, it's okay because this is what I need for me at this point. Um, then my youngest daughter, who is the exceller of the two in school, she starts to say, I don't want to go to school anymore, Mom. And so um, at this time, you know, I'm being prompted to start talking to them more in the mornings than, you know, just asking a lot of questions. Because by now, by this point, we're in a motel. We're no longer staying with my sister. She moved out of the city. I decided to stay. Um, So we're staying in a room, you know. It's fine. <clears throat> so I'm asking questions and I'm saying, well, you know, why don't you want to go to school anymore? Because her teachers are raving over her. You know, she's always finished first. And I'm listening to this because I'm remembering how when I was in school, that was me. I always finished my work first. I wasn't never really challenged. I spent more time helping the teacher and trying to be, you know, the boss of things than actually learning in class. And that's what she was doing. And then my other daughter, you know, she was having more challenges. She um, also didn't want to go to school for different reasons. You know, she felt like she wasn't getting enough attention in class. She was being punished for not understanding things that, you know, I guess the other children were understanding. Or, you know, she just didn't, her teacher, and she didn't have a good relationship with her teacher like my other daughter did, which I also paid attention to. So my daughter started informing me. Every day when I'm picking her up, she's like, Mom, we had a lockdown today. And so I'm, you know, at first, I'm not really thinking about it. You know, I'm like, okay, whatever. It was a drill. But then they started becoming more frequent, two times a week. I'm not getting any phone calls. My daughter, the older daughter, is telling me, oh, there was a kid missing on campus. And I'm saying, I didn't get a phone call about that. What if that was my child? How come I didn't get that phone call that I originally got with that first lockdown? And so more and more, you know, every every week, at least once a week, they're telling me about these lockdowns where they're shutting the children in their classes, locking the whole campus down. And then I get a letter from the school saying, um, please send your child two changes of clothes, a blanket, a gallon of water, an emergency kit. This is the emergency kit content. So now I'm a little puzzled. I'm like, okay, lockdowns, changes of clothes. And it was basically a 48-hour provision that they were asking for. No food. Just a 48-hour provision, underwear, socks. I've never heard of this before. So a flag, you know, goes off and I started to feel more uncomfortable every day when I was dropping my children off. So I started telling them things like, you know, if we ever get separated, what do you do? If mommy can, can't come pick you up from school, what do you do? You know, you look for your sister. If something goes wrong, you guys pray. Things like this. And I'm starting to get emotional. I'm trying to hold it together because it's, it's a really touchy subject when you have to prepare your children to not be with you but that's what I was doing subconsciously you know um and one day I just it just hit me you know I I was dropping them off from school and I and I was like well what if this is the last time I ever see my children so at that point I just couldn't do it. I um, continued to take them to school, but it was um, every day the hugs were getting longer and I just felt unsafe. I felt like my children weren't safe. Give me a second, Mm -hmm. please. Mm -hmm. And um, that really snapped me out of my selfishness. Because I was realizing, you know, um, I was watching the news and really not even watching the news, but watching what was going on around America. 
and noticing that there were more attacks in school and putting two and two together and realizing that they were preparing the children for attacks in the school or, you know, there was an army base nearby and I just felt like, you know, FEMA camps started becoming an issue and different things started coming up and it just, in my spirit, it was like, you're leaving your children to the enemy. You can't trust these people. They're not telling you the truth about what's going on. Mm. There was a time when I went to the school and I couldn't even get in and my children were in there and that, you know, these situations just started occurring, which were showing me, you know, your, your children aren't safe. They're not safe. Um, so after, and I believe it was about a month of, these revelations that were just coming to me because I was still so in my mind, um, preoccupied, you know, rushing to get, I hate to say it, but to get rid of them so that the questions could stop, you know, so that I could have some time to deal with what I was going on in my mind, you know, and what I was dealing with. And as the questions continued and as the conversation started to flow, it just was like a light bulb came on. Like, do you see what you're doing? Do you see that you're leaving your children there? And and by right, my children being the ones left behind, you know, not picked up at a regular school hour would be the ones to be first, to be in a situation. If, if there was one in the evening time, you know, or and in that area, you know, there was a lot of police activity and a lot of, I would see military presence and just things were changing, you know, it just yeah. wasn't the same. So I just decided one day, you know what, I'm not going to send them back. Um, It was actually winter break of that year. Um, We went to, we we got a room for free in in Los Angeles from where we were, you know, Palmdale, good 60 miles away, but I'm from Los Angeles. So we went to LA to, you know, visit family and just enjoy their break or whatever and um we we're just talking about it and I'm just listening to the conversations that my daughters are having with my son and they're telling them how you know it doesn't feel good that they have to hide in their mm-hmm. classrooms and they're talking about shooters coming on campus you know stories that children share mm-hmm. you know and I, I don't share these stories with my children but I'm just listening you know not really letting them know that I'm listening but still gathering information, just listening. And I just made the decision. I'm not going to send them back. I'm not going to continue to have my children in fear. So we began to talk about it. And um, it was really funny because my husband had suggested that I homeschool Mm -hmm. when we first got married. And I really was like, "Ah, please, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not a teacher. You know, I I don't want... 24 hours a day with my children. No, I'm looking forward to school hours where I can have some mommy time and, you know. But, um, yeah, I ended up being a homeschool mom. And I asked them from time to time, you know, do you want to go back to school? And they're like, no, mm-hmm. no. And now, you know, our situation has changed again where we're not in the rooms anymore, even though they loved it. Um, they love motel, hotel life. <laughs> I don't know why. You know, kids, they see things differently than moms do. You know, I'm like, we're all in this room. And they're like, hey, this is the best thing ever. We have room service and da-da-da, you know. Right. It was an adventure for them. But for me, it was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. But, um, excuse me. So um, we're now staying with my sister, and she has children as well so we homeschool together and it's just a learning experience because it hasn't been that long you know that I decided to not put them in school and I've never taught before although I did excel in school it's a totally different situation but we have um, a five-year-old well I have my three-year-old daughter who's still you know, she's acclimating to learning. You know, I have to do more tablet time with her. And, but she's, she's good. She knows her shapes and her colors, and she's learning her ABCs. And, you know, some days she wants to do work because she sees everybody else working. And mm-hmm. some days she's like, no, not today. So I just, you know, three years old, I kind of let her 
fill it out. But we have a five-year-old, two seven-year-olds, and two nine-year-olds. And that's what we're doing. And my daughter, she's really excelled in the homeschool. The um, seven-year-old, she's the one that was always loving school. You know, she's reading at like a fifth, sixth grade level right now. And she's, um, you know, she wants to do other things, not regular school things. She's into like nature, gardening, um, plant life, animals. She loves reading and exploring stuff like that. And <laughs> my other daughter is into fashion and, you know, design and coloring and drawing. And she's not really mechanically minded, you know, but I think that at this point, it's okay, you know, for them to explore the things that they enjoy as well. And we're just hoping that we can we can grow as they grow, you know, where it's a learning experience for the both me and my sister. And um, that's basically it, you know, just inputting the time, the money, finding different products that we can use, just always exploring different avenues to, yeah. to find the best thing for each child because they're all different. And um, especially with the boys, I see that, you know, they need more activity and, they're not so sit stillish, you know, as the girls are, but it's still, it's okay because we're here together, you know, and we're just learning. That's beautiful. So I know that right now you're, uh, thanks for being transparent, Brianna, and thanks for sharing uh, your whole story mm-hmm. and giving us, you know, the whole picture of everything. And, you know, although you're in a position where you don't have the certainties of like, you know, in another week, I'm going to be here, I'm going to do here, I'm going to, you know, I don't know if you have the certainties of the next steps of life. Do you uh, perceive that homeschooling has grown on you to such a degree? I mean, it's kind of thrusted on you, but do you feel like it's grown to you to such a degree that it's something you want to continue with your children uh, going forward? Definitely. Definitely. I feel like, um, well, like I said, just coming into the knowledge also of like I've had an awakening during this time, you know, so, and then the world is changing drastically during this time. This is not the childhood that I grew up with. This is not the world that I grew up in. And as far as what's going on in the world, I feel like I will be doing my children a disservice to put them back into school since I've taken them out. Excuse me. Um, I've um, noticed that California has implemented the LGTB whatever classes for elementary age children, which are my children, um, they're the forerunners, um, which I'm definitely against. And, um, you know, the transgender and this, and then the, the plaguing of the school shootings and just different safety issues. It's not safe yeah. anymore to me yeah. to have my children in the hands and then, to learn that a lot of the information that we received as children in school was a lie. Um, A lot of the information that they've pushed on us has been programming. So I don't, you know, I don't condone that. I don't lie to my children and I'm not going to put them, I'm not going to pay for them to be lied to. I'm not going to give them to the enemy. That's how I feel. I mean, anyone who's not for the growth and the betterment of my children, I have to consider to be the enemy. Mm -hmm. And right now, that's how I see the school system. It's yeah. not for our benefit or our betterment. Gotcha. So yes, yeah. I have to continue to homeschool my children because they were given to me. They're my responsibility. And at the end of the day, I'm going to have to answer for the situation that occurs with them. And I'm not willing to trust anyone else with it at this point. I gotcha. I would like, I would like for there to be a system, you know, um, a system of our own. I hate for it to be a racial issue, but it is a racial issue because at this point, who's going to love us better than we are? Who's going to, it's been proven time and time again that only we will. And if there was a situation where there was um, a, a school that was run by people who believe the same way that I believe. I'll just say it like that, you know, because it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really come down to skin color. Although I am for my 
black people, but if there was a belief system in place that believed in goodness and believed in honesty and believed in the care of the children first and foremost, I would love for my children to be able to attend and to thrive with other children, you know, at the same time, which is why I'm, I love the fact that we're here with my sister because there are other children and they can, and we believe the same. So it's okay for us to talk about the most high. It's okay for us to talk about the fruits of the spirit sometimes in, in class. It's okay for us to talk about loving your brother and sister. And these are the things that we need to be implementing, not just, you know, mathematics, because that's not what life is about. It, 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 it's a, it's a tool definitely, but what we're teaching our children is that we're to be known by our fruits mm -hmm. first and foremost. Mm -hmm. It's not what you know, it's how you behave. It's, it's how you treat your fellow man and your brothers and your sisters. So if there was a school that could do that, then by all means, but until then, no, I, I will be homeschooled. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, girlfriends, let me just let you know if this, uh, videotape has popped up in your newsfeed and you're like, who are these? What is this? This is Girl Princess Guide to Homeschooling. And you're with Angela Jordan Perry. That's me. And today's guest, we have Brianna Montgomery, who is out of California. And she's just sharing her story. This is a platform to share the voices of homeschooling, of the African homeschooling diaspora and the marginalized, and those to share their voice and their story to bring encouragement and insight. So Brianna has just, um, I did well. I held my tears this time. I was like, ooh, I felt my face get right. hot. <laughs> so I held it together. But uh, so Brianna just shared transparently about her story of how into homeschooling and, and her situation she's in you all hit the share button if you haven't done so already you get the word out and let people be encouraged and and to hear uh this story and uh, brianna so we're going to dig in a little bit more deeper uh brianna when you uh first okay. got started remind me how long have you been homeschooling so far has it just been this school year um yeah it's just the school year okay just the school year okay well the ending so wait no from chris from Christmas break of 2017. 16. 16. Okay. 16. Okay. All right. Good. So a good little while. Well, Brianna, take us back to your first day of homeschooling. When you first got started, like, I'm going to do this. Boom. Tell us how was it? <laughs> what was it like? Uh, uh, well, it took some acclimation. I had to, um, well, first of all, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to go to Target. And I'm going to get some of those books that I've been seeing, you know, and I'm just going to start from there. Um, my daughter, Danae, the seven-year-old, she had um, a packet, a folder that she used. Both of them had, you know, learning materials in their backpacks that they used in class that were yeah. theirs to keep that I hadn't even, like I said, because they were doing their work at school and coming home and going to bed, I hadn't dug into any of those things. So, you know, I cleared their backpacks out. I looked at what they were learning and I'm like, Oh, I can do this. This is, you know, first grade, third grade, this is nothing. So, um, I went to the target and I picked up an armload of books uh -huh. and I went home and it just started out with, you know, me giving them pages out of the book, like they would do in class printouts, you know, and as the time went on, it was like, okay, this isn't working because they would rush through it because the TV is right there, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, let me hurry up mm -hmm. so I can get to TV time. So I had to learn, um, I had to learn scheduling, which was difficult for me because I'm not a schedule person myself. So I had to, you know, watch them and see how they operate, you know, just the workings of my children. I had to really learn them from the floor up mm -hmm. while I'm trying to homeschool. Yeah. So I just troubleshooted, you know, I'm still troubleshooting mm -hmm. because they're always changing. Yeah. You know, um, some days they don't feel like it. Some days it feels like trouble for them to come do their work. And I just remind them, you know, School is always an option, even though in my mind, I'm, I'm really playing with them because I know, <laughs> I know I'm not, not going to send them to school. No, but 
just to see where they are, you know, is, is this not the environment that you'd like to be in anymore? Are you ready to go back to school? And it's always a no. So, and at this point, we don't have TV anymore either. So that's a good thing, except now it's tablets. Everyone has their own tablet. So it's like, mm, can I get on my tablet? And I just download a learning game. Like, okay, you're going to get on your tablet. You're going to learn. You're going to, it's learning time right now. And then we still have schedule. We have nap time. We have lunch time. We have play time. We have tablet time, you know, and we try, it doesn't, every day isn't a strict by the book day, but we try to maintain some learning every day, no matter what happens. And even like I said before, even if it's not handwriting mathematics, it's fruits of the spirit, it's spiritual guide, it's something you know there's always a learning mechanism in life period that they can learn from sometimes cooking you know we want to be able to do more things we're not in the place to have gardening but prayerfully soon we will be able to uh, sewing machines I mean there's requests being made so we're trying mm -hmm. to elevate yeah. as they elevate you know and it's exciting because it's always changing that that's exciting that is good to hear and the truth of it is Brianna is that even after 18 years of homeschooling, I'm still, still, still adjusting and figuring out what our day looks like. I mean, we kind of got an idea, but life happens. When you're homeschooling, you're in the middle of life. And today may be a let's stop right. this day. Oh, no, no books. We're working on attitude or we're working on a beat, immediate obedience or, or something like that. So, you know, I always okay. ask that question because some have it. Boom, 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 we do this. And then others like, nope. Uh, that's not my personality. So, I mean, that's good to hear. You're, you're new in it. So you're going to, you're going to figure out, you're going to figure out for the most part, the skeleton of it, and then you just flesh it in as it goes. So, uh, but with all that said, what is your self care like, Brianna? This is huge. Now you're in a situation where you are with your kids 24 seven. And that was like a big, you know, shock to the system. What are you doing for Brianna? Um, well, I'm getting into that. I, I'm, I have a support system now to where, because this still, you know, I'm still separated from my husband. This is my best friend of 10 years prior to our marriage. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's not just, you know, it's a big thing, mm -hmm. but it's becoming, it's becoming, um, it, it's definitely been a growth thing. I will say that it, I've grown a lot in the process and it's not so hard anymore. Not that I don't miss him. It's just, I'm past the tear part. You know, I'm, I'm learning that um, sometimes the most high uses things that we don't necessarily want to go through to prove us. So at this point, I'm more of settling in, you know, I'm, I'm getting back to myself and I'm a, I'm a new me. So I've, I've written a book. I've, I'm actually in the process of writing several other books. Um, I'm writing one on marriage warfare, which is big. You know, it's taken a long time for me to even heal enough to get into the meat of the book. But now I am. And it's it's a healing process. It's, it's a part of my healing process because I can purge and I can look at myself on the screen and see the path that I've taken, you know, the growth. So I think that that's a big part of my self care because it starts from the inside. And so mm -hmm. now that I'm healing inside, I can start to work out. I can start to think about the outside now because before it was just like, <laughs> forget it all, you know, but, and I still have my moments, you know, sure. being in a household with eight children, Sure. And three adults is definitely not what I was used to. I was used to, um, you know, having my own space and being able to lock myself. I'm my only child. So I'm even having four children was still <laughs> not, I had never acclimated to it because I was always trying to find my own space. Even with my husband, it was like, yeah, I, I just want my, I'm used to my own space. I just want my space. And I have those days, you know, where I feel overwhelmed and I have to go get in my car <laughs> and have some space, but I do it, you know, um, 
or I just take a nap. Like, <laughs> wake up, refresh, start yeah. over, yeah. you know, and it's okay. Like, I'm learning that that's okay, too. You know, that there is no, there is really no wrong way to do this except to not do it. Right. You have to just dig in and I pray more. You know, I always start my day with prayer now, which I know is the foundation. You know, I wasn't grounded. When you're on a shaky foundation, it's shaky all the time, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. um, I make sure to do that. And I have sisters that are strong now that I can talk to and that have gone through and are going through the same thing. So when I have to talk about it, I have someone to talk to now, which I'm not used to doing, but I'm learning. You know, these are the things I'm not really, I'm not, I'm still not to the place of where I splurge on myself. I've never been the type. I was talking to my sister the other day about it and she's like, yeah, you need to start taking care of yourself and you just go get your hair done. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting there. You know, I mean, that's fine. I'm still a mom first type of person. You know, I just want my girls to have what they need. My son is in, um, he's away. So he's at um, Job Corps. So he's doing his own thing. He's 18 now. And we have heart to hearts, which I look forward to, you know, things that we couldn't do when he was at home with because he felt mothered or whatever. But he's Beautiful. coming into his own as well. And I'm starting to have those one-on-ones with my daughters as well. You know, they're nine and seven now. And I'm taking the time to hear them, which is, good for my healing as well because I didn't have that growing up it was just me and my mom and she worked all the time and I was a latchkey kid and mm -hmm. I read books and that's what I do I just read and absorb information and I have to start coming out of my shell so I think for my self-help and my self-healing it's doing that it's inviting other people into my circle that's beautiful that's good I mean that's honestly that is the best self-care that you just described where you can, you know, focus in on yourself and have this inner healing. So kudos to you, Brianna. I, I'm just, now that almost brought me to tears. That that's huge. That's, that's huge. So I'm so proud of you. So proud. I of held you. it together. I'm so proud I held of you. it together. Cause, I'm, <laughs> Cause I understand. Yes, I, I have those tearful moments. Yes. I mean, I can empathize and I understand that. And I think most of the women, the homeschooling moms on here, that's going to see this video and are here with us now can understand if we can't get ourselves together and experience that self healing, it is hard as all get out to be able to give to anyone else and to care for anyone else. We would do it, but we would do it. Ah, uh, you know, I don't know. To the in, the last like you know, bit of pee. yes, you know, and so uh, with the last bit of emotion and strength that we have, mamas will draw from it to get it done. But it it's hard. So good for you for caring for yourself to bring that the work on Brianna. What's going on in the, in the inside, inside? And though it's a it's a period of time and it's going to take time, but you're doing it. I'm so proud of you, and I I look forward to staying connected with you to see your journey. Now about to cry. Because I know things are just temporary. It's just a temporary that we have to walk through. And um, yes. it's just a temporary. So um, I, I just can't wait to hear how your story uh, continues on, uh, Brianna. So let me go ahead and... Wait, before you ask me another question. Yes. Can I say one more thing? Yes, sure. I just recently got a revelation. So for the mothers that possibly are in this place, um, I was... I was hearing from a lot of women, you know, I'm, I'm interacting with a lot of women that are in separation and, you know, trials in their marriages and trials in their families. And the, the main vein is that I'm tired. I'm drained, you know, because every, I'm the center and everyone is coming to me for everything that they need. And what I got in my spirit is that we're broken. Mm -hmm. We're broken vessels trying to serve everyone from this broken place and you know the most high he fills us with what we need but it's leaking out of the side mm -hmm. it's not a full cup that I can offer you or anyone else you know I'm, I'm, I'm offering you just a sip and you're drinking it all because you're thirsty mm -hmm. and now I have none so it, you know we have to heal first we have to be able to be filled and that's where you're going to get your 
energy from. That's where you're going to get the love from. That's where Mm -hmm. if you allow yourself to be replenished and you're a full cup, a a healed cup, that will hold everything that you need. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you'll still have some in the cup because nobody is parched. They're getting something every day from you. But if you're a broken cup, the part that's for you is leaking out the sides Mm -hmm. and it's not going to leave you with anything for yourself. So if you just submit to the process Mm. because I think that we don't realize that this pain we're going through is a part of the process. We're, we're struggling against the healing, healing hurts, growth hurts, you know, um, a seed has to die before it can bring forth life. That's right. And we, we struggle because it's not a controlled situation. It's not what we're used to. It's not how we want it to be. Mm -hmm. I would have never chosen this. Absolutely. I wouldn't have put myself in this position. Sure. But this position was the position that I needed to be in to be able to uproot that shaky foundation. For a new foundation to be built, you have mm. to tear up all the old stuff and get it out of there. And that is a scary thing. But if you just trust that the Most High, our Father, a lot of us don't have fathers, but a father that loves you and wants the best for you is going to make the best for you, whether it looks bleak or not, whether it looks bad or not, whether it's against everything you've learned, it is going to be against everything you learned because mm-hmm. most of what you learned is a facade. It's a lie. And you just have to trust that you have to be able to have enough strength to say, I I don't know the next step. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not in control and I don't want to be and I'm not going to be and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to pick it up again. This is not my fight. Mm. And and leave it there Mm -hmm. and let and let what's going to happen happen and let him be in control of you and let him heal you and let and just walk through the process. Don't drag your feet because it has to get done. That's good. That's what I've learned. Girl, that's good. Right there, we can end the interview. Boop, we're done. <laughs> that's it. Homeschooling, yes, yes, yes. We homeschool, we homeschool. Yes. But that right there, that's a mouthful. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm so, next question. Show. That was it. Now, let me go to the next question. But, woo, okay. Okay. All right, dude. All right, I don't even know where to go from here. All right. <laughs> So, I'm Brianna, sorry. tell us. Uh, oh, you're good. You're good. Tell us what is your favorite quote that helps you through all of them. Now, these questions here. Now we're at the end of the show. These are quick questions to pick your brain. You can give quick answers, one or two sentences, um, just to pick your brain and and see what you have to share. So, what is your favorite quote that helps you through this homeschooling journey, uh, Brianna? My favorite quote I'm in my bible so I think my favorite quote it's really not a scripture but it's like the victory has already been won Mm -hmm. what is something hmm? oh no go ahead Uh what is something unique that you have implemented in your homeschool I mean although it's a you know new homeschool but what is something unique that the Montgomery family implements that you're proud of this is what we ensure that we do in our homeschool love that we make sure to try to love every day and that we let you know we that's it basically we just try to love every day is there a book or a cd or something that's in your library brianna that you feel like uh everyone needs to have this in their home if they're going to homeschool this is the secret little gem i found everyone should have it (laughs) Once again, I I guess I'd have to say my Bible. (laughs) It's not a homeschooling tool necessarily, but it is, you know, it's teaching you how to live. Yeah, yeah. What is the best piece of advice that you have received on this homeschooling journey? Don't give up. Don't give up. What is your favorite resource or tool or app or online platform that you use that is like a, it's a gym for you? Um, I don't know. The kids love um, learning games. We have ABC. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. And my baby loves um, ABC Mouse. 
So, you know, just letting them pick their own things. I don't really have a favorite. Whatever they like, it's fine with me as long as it's something they can learn from. Okay. All right. Well, here is the question, Brianna, the million dollar question. Are you ready? What is it? I'm ready. All right. Well, although you're new in your homeschooling, it doesn't really even matter, honestly. But if you had to start all over again to day one of your homeschooling journey, but you have your current wisdom, your current knowledge, skills, uh, convictions, insights, you still have those with you, but you're starting all over to day one. What is something that you would have changed, you would be changing, or something you make sure you're implementing as you start all over again? I would have asked for help, I think, sooner. I would have talked to other people, invited them into my situation instead of being so closed off. And, and thinking that I was being judged, I would have, you know, I would have, I would have shared faster. Wow. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Brianna, three things we need from you. Any yes. last words of advice you want to share with the girlfriends? And I don't know if we have any guy friends on here, but any last words <laughs> of advice? Number two, let us know what you have your hands in. You have to tell us about the books. I forgot that you have authored these, uh, the book. So please let us know about that, um, how to get it, hold of it, you know, your other um, projects you're working on. And then three, how can our, uh, our girlfriends get in contact with you if they want to ask more questions or, or un get more insight from you? Uh, please share that with us as well. Okay. Um, advice. I would just say, like I said before, trust the process. Um, make the connections that are brought to you, not necessarily the ones that you need to make, the ones that are made for you, the ones that are brought to you, because this is a plan. Even though we think we have a plan, we were put here in a plan. Mm. So just trust the plan. Um Don't see everything as happening to you, but happening for you. You know, all things work out for the good of those that love the most high. You know, Romans 8, 28, I love that scripture all the way down to 31. If the most high is for you, who could be against you? You know, if the creator of this world loves you, what can harm you? And I, and I know people have an issue with that, but in the end, it does work out for the good. So I would say that would be the advice, just to trust the process and change your perspective. Let let the perspective come from a good place, and it and good things will will come. Um, my what I'm doing, what I have my hands in, I'm I'm pulled in so many different places right now. I have like counseling that goes on I was actually in school getting my bachelor's in psychology to be a spiritual counselor and I ended up having to leave that behind as well had a 4.0 GPA but you know how the most high works it's like you can still do that you don't need that degree you know to do that and so people come to me and I counsel them or I you know just conversation it's not really like I'm better than them and I know so much I'm just sharing what I've learned and they share what they learn, and it's a growth. You know, it's growth. It's it's a two-way healing. So I do that. Um, I'm writing um, the book, the Marriage Warfare book, um, which should be done soon. I also have a store um, that I'm getting. It's re being revamped right now, so I guess I'll post the link um, later on today on the website so, you know, anyone that wants to be a part of that can. Um as far as what else I have my hands in, it, you know, it, it varies from day to day, but mostly it's my children. <laughs> They're um, the legacy that I'm going to leave. So I have my hands on that all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, where I can be reached, Facebook, um, I'm Brianna Nicole Montgomery, Brianna Nikki Montgomery. I don't know how they're they're posting it these days, but 
you know, that's where I am. Um, not the majority of the time. I'm coming away from that. I'm not really there as much, but I can be reached there. And, um, you know, I'm here. I'm real. I'm, I'm like this all the time. So if you want to talk, you can definitely message me and I will respond. All right, well, girlfriends, you are the <laughs> average sum of the five people you hang out with, and you have been hanging out with Brianna Montgomery out of California, out of Cali, for this past hour. Oh, I'm actually in Nevada now. Oh, are you? You're in Nevada. Whoa, okay, Nevada. I'm, yeah. I've always wanted to go to Nevada. Well, you are hang you've been hanging out with uh, Brianna out of Nevada. Ooh, even better. It's beautiful there, my husband said. But listen, so keep up the momentum and continue to connect with positive, positive, positive homeschooling people, people who are going to make that positive impact in your life. And you be that positive influence that other people can draw from. They're looking for the same thing, just like Brianna. Who can I connect with? If they choose to open up, who can they trust and connect with and build their village with? Let it be you. Let yourself be that positive impact. So you, you all keep up the momentum. Continue to connect with these positive influences that will influence your life for the better and help your journey. So uh, you all be sure again, I want to invite you to go to Girlfriends' Guide to Homeschooling, the Facebook page, and be sure to like and follow there. Uh, find us on Tumblr. Uh, blog. Thank you for all those hearts and love. I love it. Um, be sure to go to Tumblr where we are now doing uh, blog posts there. It's gg2h with Angela Jordan Perry dot Tumblr, T U M B L R dot com. Uh, we're also on Instagram, Girlfriends has Got to Homeschool, on Twitter, Girlfriends has Got to Homeschool, and um, on Google uh, Plus, where we are uh, GG2H with Angela Jordan Perry. So you all get connected with what we're doing. And then our podcast, woo! Girlfriend Chat. Connect with on our podcast. Find us on any iTunes or any podcast that, that's out there. Girlfriends got are now coming out with our girlfriends chat where it's just a time just to get on the phone and chat on a subject, particular subject. So I can't wait to get back on the phone with, I want to get on the phone with Brianna because I want to talk to her on another thing that she mentioned. I'm like, yeah, I want to talk about that. So um, anyway, connect with us there. But uh, girlfriends, is, uh, Brianna, I want you to know that girlfriends is God is grateful to you. So, so, so grateful. I'm glad we held it together. You didn't. Ha -ha. But um, I held it together on this interview. <laughs> we are so <laughs> grateful to you. We appreciate you for giving up your time this morning so early over there in Nevada um, just to make a positive impact on thousands of homeschoolers worldwide who are going to see this video, who may be in the same situation that you find yourself in today and say, wait a minute. If she can do it, I can do this. I can do this thing because I'm the best advocacy for my own kids because I love them. I'm going to protect them and I'm going to feed them and give them what they need. When I say feed, meaning pour into their lives what they need. I can do it because Brianna in Nevada is doing it. So uh, so thank it. you. Thank you so much, Brianna. I so appreciate you. Uh, big hugs and kisses to you. I appreciate you too. I look Thank you so much for having me. Yes, yes. I look forward to going to Nevada one day. I always want to go there. When I go, I'm going to look up Brianna Montgomery. I say, Brianna, I'm in town. So, girlfriends, I hope you all have found this very informative, enlightening, encouraging, uplifting in your hearts and your spirits just to encourage you, hey, this is why you do what you do day in and day out because you want to be there on the pulse of your children's education on their safety and on their in their lives, just like Brianna said. I mean, I believe that it's come to time. We're going to see more and more people are going to step out there in boldness and homeschool because of what's going on in um, our public uh, school system. I don't want us to do it out of fear. I don't want us to have to be prodded by fear. But I think we're coming to that place where people are looking at alternatives. So, Brianna, thank you again for being so transparent. Thank you all for joining us today. Be sure to share. Talk up. Girlfriends has got the homeschooling where we are encouraging and providing this platform for our voices. We are strong and we're doing well. So until next time, God bless you all. Brianna, I'll be in touch. we got to do a girlfriend chat. Okay. You all have a blessed day, Love and um, we will see you soon. Take care. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.